humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing so. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushka. And today's video is update 2.0, uh, season 2.0, the constellation season. We're going to be talking uh, about the huge changes to T10 that have happened. We're going to be using guidesblitz.com. Uh, thank you very much to Guides Blitz for making such a wonderful site. If you haven't checked it out, you really, really should because. This joint is 100% the bomb. Uh, I want to talk before I start about my feelings generally on this. I'm only going to give you a couple of minutes on this, if that. Uh, and then I will make some notes in the video about where different tanks pop up. We're going to do it by lines, USA, German, USSR, UK, etc. So I'll break it down into that. And if you have a particular tank you want to see, just skip ahead in the comments below, in the description below, there will be a timestamp for USA, German, USSR, UK, etc. You can go through those if you've got like, you'll want to know about the 4202 and that kind of stuff. Um, we'll start this with the USA tanks. Uh, the Sheridan copped an absolute flogging and I'm a bit gutted about this. Guess what the most recent tank line I ground was? The Sheridan. Uh, the view range was nerfed, and that's a huge nerf. That's a really big nerf. It it was already on a little bit of a struggle street in terms of uh, view range. I mean, not struggle, but it was a super competitive uh, area for light tanks. View range, camo. And to have it down to 307 is very bad. Um, your shell velocity as well was nerfed. Uh, hang on, we'll bring the... Bring these tanks up as we're doing them. Obviously, that's more important here. There we go. There's the sherry. Uh, this is a massive issue. I'm going to bypass uh, this patch for a second and talk about shell velocity. Something I see a lot is people saying, I don't know how you hit those shots in your videos. My insert tank here doesn't hit that shot. And that's because everyone runs this left side combat power. One of the dirty little secrets that I don't tell people is how important it is to run for me i run supercharger and refined gun if you are running a tank like an object 140 in this patch which is now like the russian leo uh, you need an accurate gun and you need to not take damage so you're going to be doing a lot more of your work at range and the supercharger for instance gives you 30 percent to shell velocity if you want to know why that's important it's because you're sniping and if you're sniping and a tank is 200 meters away and you have 1,535 meters per second shell velocity, that's pretty quick. But if you run the supercharger, that takes you up to 2,000 meters, just about 1,996. And as you can see there, and that gives you the ability to cover 200 meters in 0.1 of a second. Okay? The math seems about right. And 0.1 of a second is that. And when a tank's traversing across your screen at 50 kilometers an hour, that 0.1 of a second instead of 0.15 of a second or 0.12 of a second is the difference between using auto aim or not using auto aim, missing the shot, not missing the shot. Shell velocity is one of the most underrated stats in World of Tank splits and is something that people really need to get behind. So shell velocity nerf for a gun that was already inaccurate is very tough, particularly this here. The 690 meters a second, ugh bad that's horrifically bad that means if you are firing he you're firing lollipops at people now they buff the aim time but again if you're if you're using this tank uh as a a beefy light tank sniper at times getting those shots like it's really not great bad luck for the good old uh machine there i'm not going to talk about the sheridan missile i hate you i'll never love you m60 pattern top speed duff buffed from 50 to 52. Okay, uh, M48 pattern. This is where the magic starts. Uh, and just so you know, uh, these balance changes, uh, Guides Blitz has put them with the nerfs at the top and the buffs below. M48, alpha damage, nerfed from 350 to 340. Not fun. Alpha damage on heat, nerfed. Alpha damage on HE, nerfed. Uh, and the AP penetration changed from 255 to 248. That's a really bad one. Um, there's a lot of armor out there and losing 10 millimeters of penetration or seven millimeters of penetration at tier 10 
isn't the best, but at least it's AP, so you get that five degrees of minimization. The big buffs for the uh, pattern come with the turret armor. That's been buffed, and the gun mantlet's been buffed, and the armor behind the gun mantlet's been buffed. Basically, all the stuff that you want to buff to make it more effective as a hull down tank, which is about bloody time. Um, you can see it doesn't have 10 degrees of gun depression. It's only got eight degrees of gun depression, right? So eight degrees of gun depression is not really all that you want out of a tier 10 tank. So you've got to really get this thing right up above people to get the most out of it. Uh, however, like you're going to see with a lot of these tanks, although they did nerf the AP damage, they actually buffed the reload time. So it's pretty weird, but the DPM's gone up by 50 points. Not much, but I'd rather have the old alpha, to be honest. Um, this is the slider is basically where it was. Okay, this is where it was, and this is where it is now. Uh, that's pretty freaking amazing, in my opinion. Um, sorry, no, 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 that's the... That's not right. That's with 257 millimeters of AP. My mistake. Uh, and 330 millimeters of heat is like that. So this is when you're firing AP at it. This is when you're firing heat at it. Now, even with 330 millimeters of heat, that's a pretty bouncy castle now to go hold down with. Still got the weak point up the top there. But all in all, I think a big improver for the M48. Okay, we're not going to get too much into that because we've got a lot to get through here. T110E5. Ooh. I don't know what this is all about. Upper plate was nerfed, um, which is bad. Really bad. Very, very bad. Because you're going to have to expose your upper plate a lot when you're running the T110E5. Uh, because if you want to get those shots off using gun depression, um, then you need quite often to climb a little bit higher. And another tank that doesn't have 10 degrees of gun depression has 8 degrees of gun depression which means it can be difficult to get those shots off. And you have to climb up another foot in altitude, which exposes that upper plate and means that you're far more likely to get pinned. Um, the mid bar, that's the part across the front. Um, just across the very front, you can see it right across the middle there from either track to track. That's the mid bar. Uh, they nerfed that again by 50 millimeters, which is really tough. The lower plate got nerfed. No one likes getting a lower plate nerf. That is rough as well. And they removed the reactive armor consumable. So, real tough. Four millimeters of AP penetration nerf. I don't know why they do that. Four millimeters doesn't feel like anything. And they nerfed the hull turn rate on medium terrain. Uh, weird. Turret armor was buffed. But, I mean... I don't feel like the turret armor was the problem with this tank. I really don't feel like it. Um, they, they buffed the ground resistance from 1.2 to 1.0 on hard terrain. And they buffed the turret traverse by 2 degrees, 2.4. And the reload time was buffed as well. Again, so you get a slight DPM increase. Well, in the case of the T110E5, a big DPM increase. Uh, about 300 uh, alpha, 300... We're off by about 12. So you're looking at about nearly a perfect 10% increase on your damage. Maybe 12% increase on your DPM. Which is nice, but still, I don't know that this is what the E5 needed. And they've done a lot of changes to the E5. Still, you can see that lower plate is going to be in trouble. Um, I mean, 257mm AP. Look at the lower plate. If you go to heat, there's a lot of penetrated going on there. I don't I don't feel like there's a big change in the armor, but more DPM is is nice. This is the old armor. Um, you can see this is the old armor against heat, the old armor against AP. It definitely copped a big flogging. If you look at the upper plate on the left, you can see that it's a little bit visible there uh, against heat. If you look at it over here, against heat it's now wow that's a big nerf on the armor and it didn't really affect the turret at all uh which is a bit of annoying a bit of annoying uh the turret's now more reliable as he's saying here um 
But I, I don't ever feel like that was where I was really losing out with the E5. If you're brawling in it, and that's what people generally want to do against you because they don't want you to just sit there, hold down while they eat their sandwiches. The T57 Heavy. Weird one, this. Real weird one. There is a street called Struggle on what the hell they're doing with this thing. So they nerfed the reload time. Uh, they nerfed the DPM. They nerfed the penetration on heat AP and they nerfed the upper plate. And they nerfed it a lot. From 127 millimeters to 109 millimeters in base thickness, which is a big chunk. That's a big chunk. Um, they also nerfed the upper plate and the lower plate. They buffed the turret armor plates, okay? And this is almost like trying to turn it into more of a T110E5 autoloader. This is, um, the jury's out on this one, but this is versus heat. Like, 330 millimeters of heat, and there's tanks out there with more than that. Like, there's an awful lot of bad news there for you, versus heat. That's, that's not good. Even versus AP... Um, yeah, I just, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. The yo. Yo, yo, yo. What is he good for? Uh, got a huge turret rate. Nerf. That's massive. From 31.6 down to 24.3. You're looking at what? 5.7 and 1.6. Uh, 6.9. Um, no, 7. 5.7, 1.6. I've got a brain spasm. Um, oh my god. Just absolutely losing my mind here. 5.7, 6.7, 7 7.3. Wow. Just just panicked. <laughs> the cameras are on and I just panicked doing that. Which is a bit of a worry. Um, so that's a big nerf. That's a huge nerf, in fact. You're looking at like a 20% cut off your turret traverse. And that's important because turret traverse on a heavy isn't just about turning the gun to shoot. It's also about turning the gun to get your side profile out of the line of fire and just using your premium part of your ammo of your armor. So that's both a, a nerf to its offensive firepower and its defensive firepower in one fell swoop. Um, it got a better hull turn, which is nice. Uh, hull turn rate on medium terrain and on heavy terrain got a ground resistance buff always good increases your speed increases your acceleration everything like that uh everything with the reverse track reserve track goes at minus seven kilometers an hour now which is really good good for that um but apart from that that's the only thing they touched they just messed with the yo's basic maneuverability and mobility i think overall a slight buff Concept 1B, reverse speed nerf, which is a strange one. Um, generally, you'll see that, though, in tanks like the Concept 1B, it being important because it's a tank that's got that really weird turret. Um, let's bring that up. Have I got the concept on this account? I think I do. No, I don't. Really? I've got it on all my other. T10 heavies. Oh, she ain't there. Oh, well, sorry, team. Um, the 1B with its narrow turret, right? Uh, it struggles when it goes backwards and forwards. It's basically to keep that very broad turret, very, very long, even though it's narrow, from being visible. So a nerf to the reverse rate is like a nerf to when you go forward, snap, and then come back, but it's only tiny. Um, your shell velocity nerf is a really massive nerf. This is very, very bad news. 1,478 meters a second down to 980. That's a 30% nerf right off the top on your shell velocity, which is very bad. Uh, really bad. Um, your reload time got a buff and your DPM on APCR went up, but it was, it's a nothing buff. It's an absolutely nothing buff. And it got the emergency track mechanic, just like the Yo. So that's bad news for the concept 1B. We might not see the 1B running around in uh, competitive like we did at the last uh, Blitz Cup. The T95 A6 got a slight penetration nerf uh, across the board and they nerfed the traverse rate. It's always been very, very quick and that's what it's really 
enjoyed. Like the the Piranha, it's it's speed. It's an awkward looking vehicle, but its speed is what's really always let it do well. Um, but it did get a buff, so it's going to be re reversing a little less, but going faster while it's doing it. Uh, and your acceleration rate has been buffed quite considerably on hard terrain, topping a whole horsepower, which when you've only got 20 horsepower, but, you know, it's a bit. Um, combat stabilization mechanic added, which is a lot like the European VZs. Uh, so that's a, a buff to gun handling while being slightly mobile, which I think is important on a tank like this, which has got that huge hatch. So you want to be just like kind of jiggling backwards and forwards moving, and you can still be very accurate with that. Uh, the reload time buffed, which is great, and it got a DPM buff. So overall, I'd say a pretty good patch for the Piranha. I know Mr. Ouija loves that thing, and he'll be very, very happy to be driving it. Uh, the T110E3, reticle calibration consumable were removed, and it lost a kilometer an hour forward speed. So it's got a fair chunk of hit points buffed. 150 base hit points up from 1800 to 1950, which is very nice. T110E4. T110E4 got taken out the back and flogged. Uh, taken behind the woodshed and just beat the hell up. Although it did get like a new model. You can see here, I'll remove the camo. So you can just see what it looks like. Oh God. All right, it's, it's a lot more squat and a lot more exciting to look at, I guess, if you like it. If you don't like it, it's not exciting. Uh, there you go. But um, it's gone from AP, APCR, and HE to AP... Uh, sorry, it's gone from AP, APCR, and HE to APCR, heat, and HE. Now, I don't like that because the normalization on AP of 5 degrees was really helpful for this thing. Uh, and you don't get any normalization on heat, right? Um, yeah. Premium shells were nerfed in shell velocity quite considerably. Alpha damage nerfed by a very marginal amount, 640 down to 630. DPM slightly nerfed on your standard rounds. Just overall, um, yeah. Big nerf there on your heat. You did get a slight buff on APCR. APCR, I believe, does have uh, better... Uh, APCR is better over range. Like, it loses less uh, penetration over distance than normal shell types. Or is that heat? Let me check that out. But either way, slight buff on the velocity. And it got a 2 kilometer forward speed buff. It got shorter. And received a smaller but weaker Capola. You can see the difference. This is it. In the old patch and the new patch. I mean, I think the old one was uh, was a better looking tank in terms of not getting penned. The new one, a lot squatter, so it's going to take less damage. But they really did screw around with the gun. Uh, it's got spaced armor as well. I forgot about that on the Capola. German tanks. Here we go. German tanks. Um, Ye50M. AP shell change to APCR. That's not good. Uh, and they nerfed the dispersion. That is also not good. They buffed the frontal armor on the turret. This is one of those ones where I'm like, it's not enough to make a difference. And it was already strong in that area. So it wasn't like it had a weak armor profile. And... That was never what was holding the tank back. So nerfing the accuracy and nerfing the kind of shell type is not great, right? Um, the side armor, I don't mind. That's actually quite nice. Even though I don't think it makes a huge, uh, a huge difference in the tank. Yeah, this is what he's saying. Uh, E50M's armor notice effectiveness is slightly increased, but it's not an extremely noticeable change. You can see there. Like, if you look on the right, there's not a whole big difference between where it was at with 257 millimeters of AP and where it is now with 330 millimeters of heat against it. So, it's like, yeah, it's all well and good, but you're still going to get pinned. Um, 
turret sides are still extremely easy to penetrate the turret turns slightly yeah leopard one oh man dear me oh we better turn on our german tanks here so that was the m uh and then we're moving on to scene to leopard one i don't like this at all for the poor old leo it's now people are like the leo's amazing yeah it is it's really really good um but losing a degree of gun depression on a tank that has no armor is really tough really tough i and people are raving about how this has gone up by a lot of dpm i mean was dpm really the problem with the leo you always want more damage but 3772 up to 3947 is massive like 4000 damage per minute with double double food and uh and vents is big but come on like that is that is a lot that is a lot gun rammer rather um one degree of gun depression that's that's in excess of 12 percent when you're uh running at eight eight degrees um and that's a lot to give up this is that's how a tank basically when you don't have any armor how much of your tank you have to expose to get a shot becomes very very important still increased view range up to 313 you can see that's bigger than the old Sher sheridan's uh reload time buffed and there's the key number you've traded all that gun depression and you've got it for basically 180 round 180 dpm a minute, 170 dpm a minute uh the 50t this is rough Shell another shell velocity nerf um you can see them trying to force some tanks into some lanes here like they want brawling they want sniping this is your role your view range vision giver that doesn't get hit or your you're meant to be brawling up the front which is one of the reasons why you see a heavy like the concept 1b getting a 30 percent chop on its shell velocity that's pretty big uh, they want that tank to be less about sniping and more about getting into the thicker things and these are the different you know levers and buttons they're pressing and pushing to get the tanks into a balanced state um I don't like shell velocity nerfs, and I love this tank. There is a buff on this tank in that AP is now the shell that's being used. Uh, AP is the best. Love AP. So that gives it a better um, penetration. Uh, and they've also added improved gunpowder. So you've got to run improved gunpowder now, which is nice. Like it's cheaper than your double rations and all that. But that's going to give you a, a break up across the board in your dpm in your um in your view range you see we're down under 300 meters view range there on this tank uh yeah uh, those are things that i don't really love as changes um the tungsten shells consumable added i mean and this is not set up to play by the way because I don't usually play that tank on this account. What are you dropping for tungsten shells? Like, do you run that or do you run adrenaline? You can run them both, but wow. I mean, you take any kind of damage to your driver or your ammo rack and you've only got one multi-purpose restoration pack on a 78 second cooldown. It's pretty brutal. I don't love, I don't love having the double consumable choice to make um and i particularly feel that way about the new euro polish medium line where if you want it to be special you run tungsten shells and adrenaline so that you can smash people in bursts and yeah, i don't love it e100 i was pretty happy with the 50t as it was to be honest jesus a tall tank isn't it um Reload time on the 15 centimeter gun. That's the one we're running here, the 150. Uh, nerf from 15.3 to 16.67. So your DPM is down under 2,500. I mean, this is always coming. They buffed the ass out of the armor on this thing. They really did. It's uh, it's very strong armor-wise, as long as someone's in front of you and you can angle your turret up like that so that they can't just insta you. But that's, um, 
that's surely not great fun. Uh, they are buff the alpha damage. Mm. This is the reverse of what we're seeing on a lot of tanks. It's got 40 more alpha, which is nice. The 1020 HE is probably the coolest part of that. Just rolling more 1Ks HE wise is always fun. Um, I feel like this is a bit meh. I don't feel like there's anything going on there. The mouse. Good God. They've struggled to keep this thing relevant. It was. It had its like its glory days back when Legion won the uh, Twister Cup with Thomas the Tank Engine, the captain, of the spiritual soul of the Legion team, uh, going one v one and uh, getting the job done on my own ruins. That was very cool. Um, the shell velocity on P AP has been nerfed. The shell velocity on APCR and shell velocity on HE have all been nerfed. <laughs> Gun handling. Because <laughs> that's what the problem was. And the hull turn rate on medium terrain got nerfed by two degrees. That's what, what got buffed. Well, it got a DPM buff up to 2732 DPM, which is quite substantial. 200 DPM, that's a bit more than 200 DPM, like 210 DPM, 211 DPM. So you're looking at about 8% buff in your DPM. Your aim time's reduced. Which is nice because one of the big problems with the uh, mouse is your turret cheeks are the super weak point. So you've got to keep that angle, which means the quicker you can get a shot off, the better it is and the less likely you are to take damage in return. You can see I've got the Legion uh, mouse camo on here. because Old school. Um, ground resistance buffed on hard terrain and it's got the sandbag armor provision buffed. Um, what does that mean? Well, if you run uh, improved assembly and you put the sandbag armor provision on, we're going to do this just to be funny. Uh, you can now run around in a tank with 3,278 hit points. That's a huge amount of hit points. That's a lot of hit points, right? Um, and they've also buffed the frontal armor behind the trucks, which is big because uh, it's like the Type 71. When you've tried to track the Type 71 and you're like, why did that not do damage? Because it's got such stupid armor behind the tracks. Uh, and that's really good for this tank. And we all know about that because if you're in a TVP, you could just feast on this thing, busting the tracks and just going through the drive wheel four times and then running away, uh, which is lovely. So overall, pretty good buff for the mouse. Jaegeru, nerf the view range. Like, like who cares? Who freaking cares? Honestly, view range nerf. Like, if you're using this thing as a spotter uh, or you're spotting your own targets in the Jaegeru, you're in trouble. Shell velocity nerfed on AP, not good. It was already under 1,000 meters a second, down to 830, not good at all. Same on heat. Big drop there, though. 925 to 810. And your HE, even bigger drop. 925 to 790. Uh, big news there. Reload time nerf and a DPM nerf. And a significant one at that. 3,208 down to 3,065. Losing mobility on this, even if it is only a degree, hurts. Because it's, it's really weak against uh, Circle of Deaths. Um, but they did actually buff it on hard terrain. I don't know why that is. Uh, why you nerf it on medium terrain and buff it on hard terrain. Like, okay. Um, ground resistance buff, so it just moves quicker. Tungsten shells consumable added. Now, that is one that I would absolutely run on this. The tungsten shells consumable uh, gives you that core, so you deal 100 to 125%. Now, it only goes for 26 seconds, and... The buff and the, the rate of fire on this thing is such that you're not going to get a lot of shots off in that period of time. Uh, you'd probably get one off. You get a 15.87 second reload, right? So you might get one off and a second one if you're quick. But that means you're dealing with a gun that has 800 AP alpha and you're giving it the opportunity to get up to like 1,000 AP alpha. So that's pretty cool. That's actually a really, really good thing to run and it's one where i would probably change the consumables to run a 
uh, run the tungsten shells and a multi kit and just risk getting tracked and getting screwed. It's bad, but the possibility of, of rinsing and repeating on people is pretty wild. It'd be a, a big one to talk about your high end consumables. If you get plus 30% to the duration on that, that takes this up to something that goes for 19 seconds. That'll, yeah, really. Yeah, 26 seconds, 19 seconds. It gives you the opportunity to really get two shots, which is super important. Um, that's really what you want to do it. Uh, where are we? And the rest of the line down at the uh, J Panther. You'll see the tungsten shells as well. Not as important on any of those tanks, really, I don't think. But there you go. The grill. Jeez. What are we doing? This thing. The old sewing machine with the laser beam stuck on the end of it. Um, what, are, what are they doing with the grill? This and the FV4202 have been the most yanked around tanks in Blitz. View range nerf, again, I don't think it should have had a great view range in the first place, but the alpha damage nerf from 600 down to 580, what are we doing here? It's a TD with 580 alpha. It's a peekaboom TD. They nerfed the ground resistance on medium terrain again. I don't know why they're so set, obsessed with medium terrain at the moment. Reload time is buffed uh, from 10.6 down to 9.95. And the DPM overall has gone up by 91. Nothing. That alpha nerf is just shocking. It came out with a 150 millimeter gun. Came out with the same gun back in 2016. I did the video on it in June of 2016. I think it was June 23rd. And it had 750 alpha. And we're sitting here in 2023. It had 750 alpha and we're all the way down to 580 alpha. Yeah. Top forward speed is up three kilometers. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, they cancelled shell velocity nerfs. Thank God. Um, they, yeah, buffed the heat shell. And buff the traverse. Look, I don't love the grill. I don't love where it's at, but it's still one of the most popular tanks. People love being able to move quickly, have a turret, and camp at the back. So people will continue to drive it badly, and I'll just be like, right, oh, whatever. VK7201, another big bopper. I love big boppers, the Germans, all the pies. Alpha damage on the shelves nerfed, so down to 600 and 640. That's a big hit because. The whole point of this tank is as a peak of boom tank, right? You get that, uh, you get that front armor, you poke it out a bit, you bait a shell out on your nose by just jiggling and wiggling, getting them to try and hit that little bar in the middle, and then you poke out and you hit them. And when you poke out and hit them, you're going to hit them for 600 now instead of 640 on average. So that's not good. You also got really hardcore nerfed. Um, by 150 base uh, in your hit points, which is tough. And then they've done this same thing again where they nerfed the alpha and up the, the reload speed. I don't like it. I prefer just to have a bigger alpha gun on the tank. It had a play style. It was a pretty unique German line play style. There wasn't a lot of other tanks doing the same kind of thing in the heavy route. Um, they've buffed the aim time. Look, overall, it's probably going to be a more effective tank, but I just think I don't like seeing all these tanks trending towards this more vanilla mold. I preferred seeing things with as wide a, a parameter as possible. Um, so it was a little more, I don't know. Viva la difference. Rounded area at the rear of the tail buff from 160 to 152. That's pretty important. Uh, that's a big buff. Turret cheek armor. So overall, um, a, a good buff. This is a funny one. Improved suspension. So, uh, yeah, that's this. And you've seen this on the Type 71 before. Basically, um, you're going to be a lot better at crossing on any kind of terrain, and that's good. Okay, the more the better. Um, your average speed is going to go up, and your traverse rate is going to take a huge buff. If you're not taking that, you're mad. There's no reason to be spotting yourself in a heavy anyway. Um, you can see, you can improve that if you get onto that, like, but it's definitely not worth it. Um, yeah. 
Uh, where are we? Here you go. Here's your armor. Look at the bits at the back. Basically, that's what you're interested in. They're better now versus AP and definitely still able to get a little bounce off heat. It doesn't change a lot, but it changes. VK9001P. They removed the reticle calibration um, and sandbag armor. So that's your hit points getting hardcore nerfed, right? Combat stabilization mechanic is added. This is this over here. Where are we? Um, Oh, God, what am I saying? No, no, no. Combat stabilization mechanic. That's the same thing you get on the VZs. Um, it's basically a buff to firing while you're moving. Uh, if you're going under a certain speed, 15 kilometers an hour in this case, then the gun reticle doesn't bloom. Uh, and when you go over that, you get normal end time blooming and such, which is great. It's actually really good when you're doing those moving in and out very quickly uh, little jerks when you're side scraping and that's something that the Germans especially the rear mounted turrets have to do an awful lot of um, you've got upper plate buffs and your lower plate buffs so pretty good actually um, this is the new armor okay you can see even against uh, heat it's very mouse like now on the cheeks and when you're side scraping off a long angle you can hide that very easily uh, your upper plate looks pretty good actually that's versus ap that's versus heat when you're pulling out yeah you're basically going to be pulling out like that it's pretty good um oh my god no that's that's the new armor <gasps> wow Holy Toledo Batman. Wow. Holy ball sacks. That's versus heat. That's versus AP. 240 millimeters of AP. Oh my God. 290 millimeters of heat. Oh my God. That's a big buff. USSR tanks. Jesus, this is a big patch. T22 medium. And I've actually played quite a few USSR tanks today because you know me, I'm a sucker for a Russian med. Um, shell velocity nerfed. Not a lot though. Uh, not a lot at all. Only the HE really got a big nerf and that wasn't particularly important for a T10 Russian medium pack in a 105. Um, Reload time nerfed. The DPM on AP is down by about 108 damage per minute. Again, not a lot at all. Uh, you did get a slight one kilometer increase and a slight engine horsepower buff. The armor thickness is absolutely nothing. They've buffed um, the front plates. Like, it's still just this weird thing where see like being angled on this tank you're still just going to get punched on the area that you can't angle like it's a pike nose you want to be using it to brawl again face hug t10 mediums your real strength is you've still got spaced armor on the side it's not the gravest they actually nerfed the spaced armor um they've they've gone oh no they didn't i thought they were nerfing it okay so it's buffed from three millimeters to eight millimeters that's actually really good um, you that's that's useful when you're reverse side scraping, by the way, uh, which you can do a lot in this tank. Yeah, and you're not you're not dealing with a tank where you're expecting to bounce stuff in the T22 medium, at least not these days anyway. T100LT. Jeez, I'm not happy with this at all. My light tanks copped an absolute flogging, and lights are my favourites. T9 lights still pretty good. T100LT. Uh, penetration nerf on AP and 
standard and premium. Which sucks. Like it didn't have good penetration already. 240 is not great. You're going down to 230. And 280 is your best pen. is not great. Your upper plate got there. 76 to 65 base. It's very, very angled, but still, that ain't great. And you dropped a whopping... <sighs> 90 millimeters in base thickness on your turret armor. Little pancake just became a little softer. You got more hit points and a substantially larger amount of hit points, which is nice. And you got a slight reload buff, so you're up to nearly 3,300 DPM. But the, the thing that made this tank so special, quite apart from the tracer shells, was the fact that you got a lot of BS bounces. You really did. Um, yeah. Look at it. Against 240 millimeter AP, you're getting pinned everywhere. You can't be frontally HE'd. So, hats off. Um, yeah. Yep. 140. I'm going to get ahead of this and tell you I've driven the 140 quite a bit since the patch. And I really like it. I really like it. The reason I really like it is that the 140 now has like such a defined role. Um, it's DPM. It's great. Anyway, let's just go through it. Alpha damage nerfed from 310 down to 300, basically. Everything everything copped a 10 point nerf, right? And your view range got slightly nerfed as well. Your turret front armor was nerfed. So your, your front armor is is gone. Your gun man armor was nerfed. Really screwed. And your upper plate got nerfed. But you got 40 more horsepower into your engine. Um, up to 740 from 700. Okay? And that's quite a large amount. Um, turret traverse speed popped a big buff as well. You're looking at about 5 degrees of turret traverse speed. And your accuracy, you can get it down to 0.277 now, which is really good. Um, I've been running it with this, uh, where are we? Because this isn't my normal account, right? So I'm not running my normal stuff. Um, I've been running it like this and I've been enjoying it. 3,817 DPM you can get it up to with a gun that you can actually get down to 0.277 if you run refined gun. And you can get 2,000 meters a second uh, bullet speed, shell velocity. It's the Russian Leo. Reload time down to 4.7 seconds. DPM on 3,817 is huge on your AP. You're going to get penned by everything, right? That's cool. But you're not going to get HE pen frontally unless you get lower plate heshed, right? And it's fine. That's fine, Okay. It's gone. Yeah, it is gone. It doesn't have very many things going for it anymore, but they've given us now a real point of difference between the 140 and the 62A. The 140 is the high DPM mobility monster. The 62A has become a very good bouncy castle again. The turret is very strong and reliable. The upper plate's very strong, but it's paid for that by having a big difference in its DPM. 3,457 versus 3,800. 16. Now, that's a lot, right? That's an awful lot. Anyway, let's keep going. So I've been playing the 140, and I liked it. Object 907. Uh, turret front armor, nerfed. Hull upper plate, nerfed. Hull lower plate, nerfed. Um, engine power buffed, right? So it got faster with less armor. There's a real trend here. We've got a buff to aim time, which again is allowing you, if you want to, You've got base three seconds. You can run supercharger and you can run refined gun if you want. It's got such good dispersion, I wouldn't bother. I'd stick with your aim time. Um, but I would run supercharger. Absolutely. Uh, alpha damage got buffed up to 320. Okay. Which is pretty important. Uh, it's always had the tungsten shells. Um, but what it's got now is uh, tracer shells. So basically when you shoot someone see over here and this is a huge buff this is an absolutely massive buff for your team when you get shot by someone with the one four with a, a 907 
they are visible for 20 seconds instead of the standard 10, unless they're a WZ-132A, 1321, where they're visible for 17 seconds. I think the 121B got this as well. Tracer shells are massive, absolutely massive. Again, this is not a tank where you were really relying on armor. Um, this is the new armor profile. Like, it was never an, about the armor with this tank. Um, and it gets a lot more into the bargain. Let's talk about the 62A. My beloved 62A, you can see here, even on a press account, I've got it up to the special camo. I'm just a grub that loves the 62A. Um, nerf on the turret rate. Nerf on the horsepower. Um, nerf on your reload time. Your DPM is down under 3,500, if only just. It's still a lot of DPM, though. And nerf on your accuracy. But you've got an alpha damage buff. 20 base alpha damage is actually quite nice. And you did it with an upper plate buff, a lower plate buff, and a big turret armor buff. Really big, right? Um... That means that when you're firing 257 millimeters of uh, AP, this is with 330 millimeters of heat. Look at that turret, even versus 330 millimeters of heat. And versus AP, you can really go back to being a brawler. And that's what I loved about this tank all my years. My favorite iteration of the 62A was when it was super strong turret, strong upper plate, get brawly. And having a little bit higher alpha uh, is nice. Look at it versus 245 millimeters of AP. Like a Sheridan, you can go up and you can just bully the ass out of a Sheridan. In this thing, you know? That's ugly. That's real ugly. Uh, has very reliable armor even on flat ground. Um, pretty crazy. I'm really happy now with where the 62A is. Uh, very happy. Not so happy about where the IS-4 is. Um, hull and turret armor nerfed. Hit point nerfed down from 2650 to 2500 ap penetration nerfed and here's the big one nerfing the heat on this it's only 10 millimeters but why i mean but why sir uh and it lost medium terrain again but buffed on hard terrain it's a real theme we're seeing throughout all these heavy tank changes uh engine power buff which is nice actually that's really nice um buffed acceleration on hard and medium terrain Quite considerably in fact on the hard terrain there three horsepower per ton it's like 25 percent buff top forward speed got four kilometers now excuse me buff uh and ground resistance buffed as well buff dispersion which is neither here nor there i mean it's nice to have a more accurate gun don't get me wrong and a slight buff in dpl nothing spectacular aim time buff again very nice this is the problem though Look at your hull armor versus 330 millimeters of heat. You're just going to get smashed. It reminds me so much of the IS-6. Oh, man. Like, it's just very hard to not give angle with this armor profile. That's not good. Yep. Yeah. He's gone right into this in, uh, in guides on blitz. It's just a, it's across the board. It's gone down. Like all the bits, they've really hit it with the nerf hammer. I'm not sure why. I really don't know why. It's across the board getting wasted. I don't feel like it was overperformed. There weren't a lot of IS-4s in competitive. Uh, IS-7, engine power nerf. Like God, righto. 150, 1050 to 1000. Where are we on I-7? Come back. Um, um, forward speed nerf. 42 kilometers an hour is the same as the I-7. I don't know why. This thing used to do 50. We're down to 45 to 42. Whatever. Uh, AP penetration nerf. This, this has had the worst gun in the game for so long. I hate the I-7's gun. One of the most troll guns in the game. You've got a hit point buff, which is nice. You can get up to 2,703. And your APCR pen up to 320, which is nice as well. The tungsten shells consumable is really quite nice. But I don't know if there's space for me to run 
uh, in a tank that's going to be doing so much brawling and so much frontline work, running one repair kit only and at that a multi-purpose repair kit at that is very dangerous. Uh, most of the time when you get screwed in a heavy tank like game, it's going to be eating a tracking shot or you can't move. Uh, when you're trying to 1v3 or something, there's always going to be some competent medium driver who's just going to track you and then the rest of the team's going to dack you. And so tungsten shells, while it is good if you can use it, it's not, not the best. You don't love it. Don't love, don't love it. Object 260. Big buffs, baby. Big buffs. Oh, well, they nerf the engine horsepower and they nerf shell velocity. That's a big cut if you are running this and sniping. 900 meters a second on heat is fine 1259 down to 980 um that's all right 980 is fine alpha damage nerfed 400 alpha look this thing's always been speed and aggressiveness and bully a medium right but you're getting um a big buff to your armor and you're getting a buff to your reload time overall that's going to give you 100 more DPM. These are important things. More important, though, is that you're going up from 2300 base to 2400 base, which allows you to get to 2544, and you are more maneuverable as well. Have a look at the, um, the new armor versus the old armor, right? This is right to left. So this is uh, to view the old... This is the 10.2 version. And this is the 10.3 version. It's pretty good. Pretty freaking good. That's against 330 millimeters of heat. Just there. And against 257 millimeter AP. It's pretty good, man. That's a big change. Big change. Um, huge improvement. Huge improvement. It gave up a little bit of mobility for that, and a little bit of its sniping ability, but overall, huge buffs. Um, yeah, AP shell change, object 777. Just pay 25,000 gold for an object 777. Might be happy. AP change to APCR. Straight away, that sucks. Shell velocity nerf across the board. You got a dispersion buff of 0 0.34 to 0.335. You'd be furious, wouldn't you? I mean, you literally just bought this thing. It cost you 25,000 gold to get, and it's had a significant buff of nerf on its shell velocity across the board and changed to an APCR shell. So now you're doing worse in terms of penetration. I don't know, man. I didn't think it was that great to begin with. I didn't love this tank, and I don't think that's changed. Object 263, the Yolo Wagon. I've just started grinding this. I'm up to the SU-12254 on my personal account. I didn't realize that I haven't played this tank on this account, so that's pretty cool. Um... Maximum view range nerf. Wow, that sucks. It, it does actually work worse for this tank than it does for like the Jaegeru and such because this tank is all about catching and killing its own prey. So view range does actually help this tank. AP shell change to APCR, which isn't great. Um, APCR change to heat, which is also not great. You don't like... I don't like having heat as a as a shell type in a tank like this where you are yoloing, where you're pushing, right? Because you're going to have a lot of shots in close proximity which could hit tracks, which can hit spaced armor. And heat doesn't like those things. It's not as reliable, it's not as safe as AP and APCR. Um, and a big nerf on your standard shell penetration down to 285. Nerf again across the board, we're seeing a lot of this on shell velocity. You've got more heat pen, 30 millimeters, to make up for that different shell type. 
your reload time, you got a buff. Your DPM is now up to 3,997, which is a big number. Uh, you also got some very cool armor buffs. And this area here, the deck, uh, the deck that you can see underneath the gun, it was a huge weak point previously. Um, They've fiddled around with this quite a few times. There's been various iterations of the Object 263 where you could reliably pan the area around the gun mantlet and all kinds of things. It's such a strange, awkward tank, but it's a tank that I've I've loved for a long time uh, because of its weird play style. The side armor got buffed as well. It's just it's I'll show you. The engine deck buff. Okay, so this is the new version of the armor. Big buffs. Big buffs. Very cool. Uh, does it have it the old? Here you go. Here you go. Um, if you're face hugging someone, yeah, okay. This area along the left is versus AP and 57 millimeters. On the right, it's 330 millimeters heat. You can still be pinned on that thin strip when you're face hugging above the deck and below the gun. But that's so much better. Before they used to just be able to overmatch the deck smash you two six eight and four such a strange tank it really is it it's such a strange tank uh maximum view range nerfed it doesn't hurt us as much as uh you think because look it's great at face hugging and smashing but it's also very slow and you don't want to be going out pushing people in this uh without flank cover and that flank cover preferably is mediums and, and lights but anyway ap shell changed to apcr which sucks uh standard shell nerf of 40 uh alpha damage each shell nerf of 20. But you did get two kilometers an hour faster and you do have overall more dpm but not enough to really Overall, not much of a patch for it. Just same old, same old. 268. Bad news for the 268. View range nerfed. Cabin armor nerfed by 30 millimeters down to 266. Upper plate nerfed by 45 millimeters, uh, which is really bad. And lower plate nerfed by 32 millimeters. AP damage buffed by 20. Great. DPM on AP up to 3073. Yeah, this is not good. This is the old armor, okay? This is the old armor, okay, versus 255 millimeters of AP penetration. This is the new armor. Oh dear. Yep. You ain't hiding anywhere, baby. The gore old, good old glory days are gone. Gone. Yeah. UK tanks. I'm losing my voice. This is crazy. This is Hatch is so monumentally large. We're up to where I've been going for an hour. Ooh. An hour. An hour. How far have we got to go? We're halfway through? No, we're more than halfway through, surely. Please tell me we're more than halfway through. Oh my god. Vickers Light. Alpha damage nerfed from 350 down to 300. I've played the Vickers quite a bit today. And I, I'm going to tell you, I... I didn't find it to be hugely changed in its play style. The only thing I didn't like was that they nerfed the alpha on the Hesh, but it still has 105 millimeters of Hesh N, which is really important. Where is the Vickers? Um, you can see here, they nerfed the Hesh uh, damage down to 380, but it's still got 105 millimeters of N. So it's still very, very effective in terms of putting out damage because they did buff your reload substantially by 1.2 seconds they remove the gun mantlet right so you're not going to get those gun mantlet bounces and stuff but i'll be honest i wasn't often i always treated the vickers like a uh like a leo or an ru251 like I, I treat most of my light tanks and it wasn't as noticeable for me bouncing stuff with this um dpm overall went up to 3364 it's a very common theme here with the lt the T100 LT and the Vickers. Uh, slightly stronger when using that. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, the FE4202. This is a 
train wreck. This is an absolute train wreck. Uh, cheap hash, it's been nerfed down to 65 millimeters. So you have to pay. If you want to use this tank and you want to run hash, you have to pay. And you have to pay big because they've nerfed the reload time by 0.3 of a second, right? Um, which really affects your hash DPM. And that takes you down from 4,125 to 3,917. It was already a roll of the dice. You've lost the ability to run cheap hash, which was means the tank is incredibly expensive. Okay, here we go, I'll show you. This is the hash gun, DPM 3,077. DPM on the heat gun, 3,419. So your AP DPM on this tank is just dog water. It's really, really, really bad. Um, and you can't afford anymore to run this calibrated shells to boost your hash pen up to 21, 231 millimeters of hash pen. Because when you run that, then your DPM, I'll show you here, and I'll pull that to give maximum DPM. Then your DPM on the tank goes all the way down to 2,899 DPM. So they've taken the best, most interesting part of the tank and just screwed it. They've made it into a way more vanilla tank where you're almost forced to run this gun here, the heat gun, um, to get decent DPM. But then your cheap hash on the heat gun is 65 millimeters. So that's, that's fine. HE pen of 65 millimeters is nothing. So they've taken what I think was the best part of the tank that made it interesting and that was the reason I drove it. They've removed it, which is means I'll, I just won't drive this. There's no point. Driving the FE4202 is now rubbish. Really disappointed. Um, really disappointed. Base aim time buff. Cheap hash alpha damage buff from 440 to 500. I haven't seen that. I don't think that's the case. I think that might be something they said they were going to do. But yeah, it's up to 480, not 500. Which sucks. Is that just like 500 the max? No, 480 to 500. High DPM on cheap hash, but I mean, it's 65 millimeters of pen. It's horrific. There's the heat gun, the L7A1. 105 millimeter um accuracy nerf as well like just across the board really bad patch for the fe4202 unless you ran the heat gun on it in which case you're up to 3464 ap dpm i mean you can still use it and it can be effective but there's other more fun ways of running a high dpm medium with a higher dpm output fe4005 um, reverse speed buff pretty good for a tank that has such fragile armor and is aptly termed the shit barn because it's that freaking big that it won't even fit in the let's let's move this down so that you can actually see some of these the size of some of these things uh this thing's crazy. just crazy big okay uh hitch point hit point nerfed that's not good um, and the reticle calibration removed. I mean, I I never really ran that anyway. If you're running consumables on this thing, engine boost, shell reload boost, and uh, that's that's where you're at. Spore line is a must too. Minus 20% damage from high explosive shells. So this is a tank that you really don't have a lot of room to run anything else on it anyway. A better hull traverse, that's great. The Badger, APCR changed to heat. Not good. That's not what you want to call uh, AP shell changed to APCR. Again, not good. Uh, accuracy dispersion nerfed down to 0 0.301 and 0 0.285 if you're running all the bells and whistles. And a shell velocity nerf. You're doing this frontally, right? You're doing this frontally. You really are. And they've started actively treating it like a tier 10 heavy tank, which is you get another 120 hit points if you want them. Uh, you can run the uh, improved assembly for more hit points if you want up to 2244. I wouldn't. I'd just stick with the armor. 
um, and your hash penetration went up to 110. So when you lost that with the FB4202, you now get that wild big ass pen of 110 millimeters, your 550 alpha hash, which is very nice on a tank that already has glorious DPM numbers. Super Conqueror. AP penetration nerf of 7 millimeters, APCR penetration nerf of 6 millimeters. Neither here nor there. Not really very important uh, as far as I'm concerned. Reload time buff from 8.4 to 8.2 and your DPM on AP buff by 88. Nothing. Nothing to read about here. More just fine tuning the knobs on the radio to get this station in properly. Uh, hash penetration nerfed from 110 to 85. That ain't great. Um, they gave it to the Badger. They took it away from this big bad boy. Look, it was nice. It was nice. It was a little ancillary benefit. You paid for it with a few little ancillary benefit nerfs up the top. Chieftain Mark Six, no nerfs. Standard APCR shells changed to AP, which is nice. And they changed the reactive armor consumable. They added it, which is pretty good. Um, Putting it on somewhere, you know, it's nice to have. 20% reduction to damage is nice. 20% reduction to damage is nice. Not taking a shell because you can repair your tracks is even better. So I'd probably just stick with the two multi-repair kit stuff. Uh, the 183. This is the most misused tank in the game. More idiots drive this tank pound for pound than any other tank I've ever seen. It just... Good God. They nerfed the dispersion, the gun handling. They nerfed the accuracy. It was so good. It was so bad already. And it's worse. They nerfed the reserve, reverse speed. They nerfed your HE shells down to 80 millimeters. They nerfed the Hesh Alpha down to 1200 your DPM on hash was nerfed to 3,644. They nerfed the AP shell velocity. They nerfed the hash shell velocity to 690 meters a second. Look, they want you to drive something else. They've had enough. They want you to drive something else. Um, you can now carry 21 shells. have 850 horsepower which is 50 horsepower more your base aim time was buffed um you're four kilometers an hour faster you got 20 alpha on your ap shell damage and your he shell damage alpha was buffed from 1300 to 1390. Uh, The only reason you ran this gun, the only reason you ran this tank was for the high explosive joy of the Hesh shells. Lowering that, maybe we'll get less idiots running it. That's all I can say. Because that would be good. The base aim time buff will be quite significant. The stabilization being of course estimated aim time to become longer. If not counter by a base aim time buff, which it is, since it being a big buff. Engine power buff will help the tank. What makes the 183 slower? It's terrible terrain resistance. Resistance, not a weak engine. It's just shit. Yeah. It's had it. Look, I hate the tank because. People drive it so badly. It's driven so passively. And everyone wants one because of the high damage rolls they get hit with. Every once in a while, you know, you roll over the top of the hill, you get hit for, for 1,600 uh, by a, a Death Star and you're like, well, I've got to go get that. I'll hit everyone for 1,600. And you end up with a bunch of guys with low to mid 40s win rate sitting at the back of the map on dead rail, not getting any shots and calling their team facking noobs because they, um, they're losing and not seeing the irony when they look in the mirror in the morning. Uh, you could nerf this thing into extension. I would not care. 
If V two one five B turret rate nerfed four degrees, which is a bit rough. Again, we talked about that with the yo. Um, less important on this one because it's rear mounted. So if you're using that turret rate, uh, you can also do pretty crazy things with rear mounted turrets. Um, the hull traverse on this thing's always been pretty quick. Maximum view range nerf never good for a heavy like this that's pretty aggressive big buff on your engine horsepower and your acceleration on hard terrain has gone up from 15.88 to 17.06 uh, your effective acceleration rate on medium terrain was buffed from 13.23 to 14.21 and you got a 5.7 kilometer an hour buff up to 34.3 to 54.7 5.7 so 40 kilometers an hour rather not 50 well, i've been going now for about an hour and 10 minutes this is a big patch Japanese tanks. Wow. We're just over halfway. Uh, Hori. Hull turn rate on hard terrain nerfed from 48.4 to 42.9. I've got to say, I agree with this. This tank was stupidly hard. This in the WZ, uh, the Chinese TD, was stupidly hard to deal with in mediums. It's like a jitterbug, right? Hull turn rate on medium terrain nerfed from 41.4. 48 to 30.64 like they were just stupidly hard to actually deal with uh on medium and, and any kind of terrain the thing just moved way too quick view range nerf not such a big deal for uh, a hurry base aim time nerf by bugger all 0.15 of a second so you're looking at about 0.1 of a second loss overall and a dispersion nerf which while not great it's still from 0 0.308 base to 0 0.317 base. You've got a buff to your hit points, which is pretty significant. 1750 to 1900, which allows you to get up to 2014 base hit points. Your ground resistance on hard terrain is buffed from 1.2 to 1.8. So you can go a little quicker. Your frontal hull armor was buffed by 10 millimeters. Your frontal superstructure was buffed by 16, 17 millimeters. Your gun mantlet was buffed by 20 millimeters. That's pretty important, all this stuff. Um, okay, this is your new armor profile versus heat. I mean, it still sucks versus heat, but so what? 330 millimeters of heat, you should be getting pounded. But versus AP, that's important because having more hit points is one thing. And having tanks have to fire heat at you lowers the amount of hit points you lose. So... You've got a pretty big indirect survivability buff there with that armor and the hit point buff. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, very flat. That's cool. Type 71. Another one that's been touched up a few times now. Aim time, base nerf from 2.1 down to 2.25 and a reload time nerf and a DPM nerf on your HE. Right, your heat shells were changed to AP, which is good. It seems to be a theme across the Japanese line. Uh, the TB got the same thing, and the Hori's already always had that crazy stuff. Alpha damage buff to 420, and a DPM on AP buff to 2625, which is important when your DPM is so low. Any little bit will help. Premium ammo change from heat to AP is a huge buff. Yeah, that's exactly right. Our premium AP... Five degrees of normalization. Better against angled armor, which is what you're going to run up against an awful lot when you're jousting on the heavy lines. Uh, and it means that you can run the Pramo on this, have the same, nearly the same a DPM as you did previously. It's not great, but you'll go from that to having really nice penetration with, you've got 330 millimeters of, millimeters of pin on premium AP. So you can really pump. Uh, very, very important. STB1. It's getting the same thing. So you've actually got an alpha damage nerf from 350 to 330. Uh, but in your hull traverse speed from 70.7 to 65.2. Like, wow. How will you ever manage with 55.2 degrees in hull traverse? But the heat shield was changed to AP. So this means that you're able to fire and pen so much better, right? more normalization five degrees of normalization um and your reload time buff is huge and you 
you only lost 320 is your base damage now on your premium ap 330 is your base damage on your standard ap so you lose 10 damage 10 damage right have a look at this when you're running this tank you have 300 millimeters of ap pen and you have about 30 100 dpm at 300 millimeters of pen. You can run. It'll cost you a lot of money. It'll cost you a lot of money. But you can just run premium ammo on this. Pen the crap out of everyone. Very cool. French tanks. Oh god. So many tanks to get through. We're an hour and 15 minutes in. Amex 30B. Uh, across the board, turret roof armor nerf, gun mantlet armor nerf, armor behind the gun mantlet Hit points nerf. They've really done a number on its survivability. Shell velocity nerf down to 12.47 meters a second. That's more important than you'd think in a tank like this because it's an autoloader. It relies on being able to dump and hit multiple shells in a row. And uh, it can't like just get unspotted, hold it, hit all its burst in one damage and then pull back behind cover. So you're taking a risk when you're dumping damage like that at any kind of range. 12.47 meters a second is good. But it's not as good as the nearly 1500 meters a second shell velocity it had previously on its ap it's heat and it's he also correspondingly getting nerfed down reload time buff though uh and dpm on ap buff all the way up to 3563 so they're pigeonholing it into that real glass cannon kind of role which is risk and reward good players will probably love this because they'll get more damage and they're already very very good at not taking damage in making good trades um aim time buff as well and oh god i'm i'm so tired i'm thinking of the amx 50b here we go again forget everything i just said warning warning amx 30b <sighs> okay so they're nerfing the armor across the board they're nerfing shell velocity, which is not great. I saw Fatness's video on this. Or I saw him playing this on stream, actually. And he loves the Amex 30B. It's one of his favorite mediums. And he's not really that fussed about all the nerfs here because he loves the fact that you're going to have the mad DPM increase. And it already had a big weak point on top. So if you're able to play with it with the big weak point on top, and you're not really that fussed about this because you're a good player. You can handle the big weak point on top and you can handle all that. And now you're getting a whole bunch more damage. You're also getting a big accuracy buff and an aim time buff. Although you can see that you're going to take a huge chunk. You can be penned through the mantlet now with heat. Um, you can still do massive things. That chat. I played this today, uh, and I want to tell you, I really enjoyed it. I think it's really, really improved. I'm using the second gun, the 105mm gun. They've changed the stock 100mm gun to a four-shot 270 alpha gun uh, instead of a, a 310 alpha gun. Um, it used to be 310 alpha, three shells. It's now 270 alpha, four shells. It gets a slight penetration buff and all those kind of things. What I really want to talk about here uh, is that the top gun... Oh, it also got a big view range buff. 320 meters up to 337 meters, right? Really important. Really important. Uh, it's it's giving it way more of that light tank role where it is the vision and getting out there, which is really important. That's using vents and double food, which is probably what you should be using anyway. Um, but the top gun now has a 350 alpha hit right that's really huge the bat chat having a 350 alpha gun means you can legitimately dump 1050 damage in three shots which is very important when you are running that the shell reload boost right minus 30 percent to reload time of each shell in the magazine so you run that got your great view range you've got your 
shell reload boost. And you're just smashing people. And I really enjoyed it. 350 alpha from 310 is a big change, right? Um, you, you drop penetration. You drop a little bit of DPM overall. But come on. Being able to drop over a thousand damage into an enemy tank in three shells very, very quickly. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Bosh. Tank I freaking hate. The regular gun. Dispersion nerfed. I <laughs> fucking hate this tank already. I don't care. Just hate it. AP shell changed to APCR on the autoloader. Um, which is good. If you don't like the Fosh. It's, it's a direct penetration nerf. Uh, shell velocity buff. And a dispersion buff. Look, you won't get me driving this. I don't like this tank. I don't feel like its armor is strong enough. I don't feel like it's strong enough overall. And it just, it doesn't do it for me. So that's the AMX 50B now. Let's talk about that. Okay, hang on just one second. My wife is messaging me. Okay. AMX 50B, frontal turret armor nerfed. I knew it got an armor nerf. Frontal hull armor nerfed, right? But I didn't realize that that was talking about. Anyway, long story short. Uh, it's got a mobility buff in terms of its hull traverse speed and its aim time has been buffed and its reload overall has been buffed so that your DPM is now up to 2927. Okay, pretty good. But look at the armor. Like, yeah, hello. Hello, getting penned for days. That's AP. That's heat. Holy Toledo, Batman. That ain't good. So, the original glass cannon. Does more damage, but yeah. Wouldn't you have loved to have not bought one of these things recently? Uh, tank got heavier. That's right. Went away in the off-season, got on the weights, put on 10 pounds of muscle. Muscle watch. Premium AP shells changed to heat. It's a penetration nerf. Um, standard AP shell change to APCR, uh, direct penetration nerf, and your tungsten shells consumable is removed. AP shell alpha damage nerf by 30, premium shell alpha damage nerf by 20, HE alpha damage nerfed by 20, penetration nerf from 260 to 257, and effective acceleration on medium terrain nerf by about one. You got better on hard terrain, which is something that we've seen as a common theme throughout all these, a whole bunch of the heavies. Uh, hull rate and hard terrain, all that kind of stuff. And your ground resistances were buffed quite considerably. 1.2 down to 1, 1 1.5 stays and 1.9 stays. 1.2 down to 1 is a big buff. Um, reload time buff. So although you did lose alpha damage, you slightly gained DPM. Overall... Not loving it. Like you got slightly more alpha damage, but dude, yeah. What have they done with the armor? What there was armor changes to this? Oh, hang on. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Upper plate armor got buffed. Lower plate got buffed. And you can see that's strong, man. That's versus uh, 54, 54 millimeters of AP. That's really strong. It was already really strong. I just preferred it with a bigger alpha. Chinese tanks. Um, God, we've got got to be getting closer at an hour and 30 here wz132-1 reload time nerf dpm nerf <laughs> what i drive probably 40 percent of my game in t10 lights i love light tanks maybe 30 percent. still a big chunk of one specific subsection of one specific 
And this is the one that I consider to be the worst light tank out of the bunch. And it's had a big nerf. Uh, reload time nerf, DPM and AP nerf down by 300. DPM on heat, big nerf to under 3k, 2,707. It got better penetration because it got AP instead of APCR. And the shell damage went up to 360 instead of 330. But it's got no gun depression. So you really do rely on flat ground DPM on this. It's not like a hide. And you've got to use a lot of conniving uh, brain power to get this thing into positions to use that alpha damage. And 360 for me is not enough to make a difference. Like... Give it 400 alpha and make it special and nerf the DPM down to about 3,000. And yeah, I'd consider that. I'd, I'd start driving this maybe instead of a Sheridan. Um, yeah. View range buff, 313. Still not as far as the Batch hat, but a little further now than the Sheridan, which is nice. I can see that they're trying to create some tears here in the light tank vision stakes. AP shell penetration buffed uh, as well. And... That's nice. 237 millimeters, though, still is crap pen overall. And 302 millimeters of heat. A little higher than the STB one. 121. UZ 121. Game we saw Athena do 8K in this tank just yesterday. Shell velocity on AP nerfed down to 830. Shell velocity on heat down to 810 from 1000. And HE nerfed to 790. I always look at things like this and I wonder who thought just 1000 meters across the board was the number? Then you come in and balance and you change it to 790, 810, and 830. Like, how did you start with just a thousand on every single shell pipe? Just really weird to me. Engine power, 20 horsepower nerf. Tungsten shells consumable added. When you get a 400 alpha medium, um, that is actually really exciting. Uh, 420, rather. Um, being able to run tungsten on that with 245 millimeters of pen. A fairly decent reload. I quite fancy that. Yeah. That affects the 7, 8, and 9 of the tier as well. They also added the gunpowder thing, which is absolutely crackerjack. So you get a plus 35% shell velocity. If you run that and the plus 30% to shell, shell velocity supercharger, what do you get there? Let me have a quick look at this. So running the supercharger uh, and then running the oh, it's not going to let me put the gunpowder in on the phone, is it? Okay, so running supercharger, you're going to run. Can I adjust that over here? No. Running the supercharger, you're going to have a thousand and seventy-nine shell velocity. Your AP shells. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. Hmm. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, I think. Is that right? They nerfed it down. Oh, I did. They nerfed it down to 830 meters a second. Wow. So you get up to a thousand meters a second with supercharger and then you whack on, is it another 30% from this plus 35%? So you, is that base? It's going to be on base, not on the extended. So it'll be about um, 810. It's going to be 240, 243. Hmm. 243 meters a second on top. So you're looking at about 12, about 1300 meters a second of shell velocity. I'll probably go with that. That's, that's, you need much better shell velocity. Um, okay, 121B, really weird. They added um, reactive armor to it. Oh, they removed, sorry, they removed reactive armor, but they added adaptive concealment. Now, this is the thing that you get on the 121, 132. So you can see who shot you and where you're getting spotted from, rather, not who shot you. Uh, and it becomes invisible more quickly. So you drop off after seven seconds. That's pretty important. Um, you get a red eye icon above the person that spotted you. That That's pretty important for a medium tank to have that kind of ability. 
I don't think it'll be a game changer in competitive, but it'll certainly be something in public games that will make people stand up and think. Like it's it's a wild thing. Okay. Uh one one three. This is a big this is a bunch of changes on the poor old bronze warrior. Um dispersion nerf down to 0 0.31 from 0 0.326 base from 0 0.293. Um that's at its max. So the best you can get is 0 0.310. Gun handling, that's the turret gun handling coefficient while you're moving the turret and such. Uh got nerfed as well. Which is not noticeable on all kinds of situations, but it, it, it's like stuff in the margins percentages. APCR shell damage nerf down to 400, but an overall AP nerf, AP buff. Um, this is something we're seeing as, as well. Like a lot of these alpha damage nerfs that DPM buffs. That's that's worse for heavy tanks than you think, because heavy tanks rely on peekaboo. A lot of their peekaboo is, is where it's at. 113, not so much. The 113 isn't just a peekaboo tank. It's like a big DPM monster. You're over 3k DPM still, which is a lot. Um, oh no, it got a it got a nerf. It didn't get the buff. Okay, so it's just a straight up nerf. That's not good. That's not good. So now, what's your DPM on your APCR? Is 3234. If you're not running everything, it's 3234. 3274 is the best. Okay, that's rough. I'll turn right on medium terrain nerfed as well. My wife is messaging me a lot. I've just got to sort this out. Um, APCR shell penetration buff by 4 millimeters. Heat shell penetration buff by 10 millimeters. Base aim time reduced. Turret rate buffed. Uh, turn rate, which is important. These are all good things, and ground resistance on hard terrain again buffed, which has been a common theme with all these heavies. Uh, engine power buffed, 20 horsepower, effective acceleration on the ground resistance affects this uh, on hard terrain. That's up to 17.6 a ton. So it's become a little more mobile overall, and it's become a little less efficient at peekaboo. Look, it's not going to kill the tank one way or another. I think it's probably still in a pretty strong place. WZ triple one five A never liked it, but what do they say about it? Dispersion nerf, AP shell alpha damage nerf down to four forty. I don't like that man. Like four sixty was the one thing that this tank had going for it in terms of interest. HE shell from six hundred to five eighty. Really, was this necessary? Upper plate nerfed. It's a it's a pike nose, almost like a a glacial at tier ten. Um, Lower plate nerfed, frontal turret armor nerfed. But I mean, the, the lower plate and the upper plate, base thickness wise, it's like 21 millimeters on the upper plate, which is quite important. But yeah, frontal turret armor nerf from 404 to 334, that's still huge. It's still a big number. Um, yeah, it's not going to make much of a difference at all. Gun mantle nerf from 300 to 272. Hull turn rate on medium terrain nerf from 28 to 26.62. But in the good side of the ledger, aim time buff, which is great. Any heavy getting an aim time buff, you love it because they're the, that's your gameplay style. You're generally in direct confrontation with multiple tanks. So the quicker you can snap a shot, the better. Reload time buffed from 9.8 to 8.93. So you got a nerf on the alpha again, but an overall AP damage buff. Still nearly... 3,000 damage, but you would have loved to have seen that 460 alpha stay. Higher alpha guns are safer in the overall. Like, there will be times where you need DPM, but higher alpha guns mean less exposure, right? Hull traverse speed buff, um, only a degree, not a whole lot. Ground resistance on hard terrain, again buffed. And a 50 horsepower buff to your engine up to 800. Let's have a look at these armor things. Uh, I mean, that's versus AP. No one's penning you hull down with AP. 
even with heat, your hatches are the weak points. I don't see a whole lot of difference here to how it, how it would be. Hull armor is significantly weaker. Well, that's what we thought would be the case. The turret is just as strong as before. Okay, this is 255. This is the old. Oh, wow. Okay, I was wrong. That's shit. That's really bad. That's really bad. Being able to pin that upper glacis so solidly with AP is really bad. Not good for a, a collector tank. Like, you hate seeing these collector tanks get nerfed. 113 GFT. God, I hate playing against this thing. View range nerf. Dispersion nerf. Down to 0 0.310 as your best rather than 0.285. That's bad. Uh, hull turn rate on hard terrain nerfed only 3 degrees. 3.3 degrees. This is this tank and the Ho Re were two tanks I hated dealing with in mediums. Hull turn rate on medium terrain nerfed. Penetration IP nerfed by 12 millimeters. Not a huge amount, but still, that's pretty. 278 versus 290. That's pretty solid. That's. Not great. Penetration on heat nerfed by 10 millimeters. But your base aim time got buffed. That's pretty cool. 0.4 of a second is a big number. 2.5 seconds down to 2.1 seconds. The reason that's cool is when you're moving this thing around, like when you're in brawls, having a lower base aim time is really, really helpful to hitting shots on tanks because you quite often are moving so fast the reticle isn't keeping up, keeping up with the tank, and you don't really know if the shot's going to go in. You've got to feel it. Um, ground resistance is on hard terrain buffed again. Horsepower buff of 60 horsepower. Four kilometers an hour top forward speed. And hit points buff from 1800 to 2000 base. That's good. Hull angled front side buff. That's that bit just either side of the face of the tank. Uh, from 170 to 182. And the gun mantlet got a bar from 336 to 350. Jesus. What what was the problem with it at 336? Jeez. Uh, just an overall armor buff. Wow. Wow. Let's have a look. Versus two. Just a whole lot of tomato now, isn't it? That's that's the new version versus 330 millimeters of heat. On the right. Shit. <laughs> oh, what the hell? European text. It's going to be nasty, man. European tanks. Okay, we're up into hour and 40. Minotauro. Where is it? I never bothered to buy it. I don't like it. I don't like the play style. I couldn't be bothered to buy it now. Just talk about it. AP shell change to APCR. Shell velocity of heat changed. Engine power nerf and uh, effective acceleration on both. Hard and medium terrain nerfed, but not by a lot. Big hit point buff, 100 extra hit points, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, about 5%. Hull turn rate buffed on hard terrain again. Hull turn rate on medium buff. And shell velocity on standard shells buffed up to 840 meters a second from 790. They're, I, they're good trades for this tank. The problem with this tank has always been you can't turn the turret fully. And you get in a situation where your sides are weak and you can't angle up to it quickly enough. Um, that's that's a survival buff, right? Right there. I think that's important. I think that's overall coming out a little bit better. Progetto. Gun mantlet armor nerf from eighty to sixty millimeters. Oh my god, you're going to get hammered. Hit point nerf from nineteen hundred to eighteen hundred base. AP penetration nerf 5mm, heat 5mm pen nerf, 
HE pen, three millimeter pen there. 675 horsepower to 720 horsepower is the difference. Now, that is a... I don't understand what's going on there. So that's the base horsepower before you put all the food in there, right? Shell reloads buffed. Numbers are showing using calibrated shells. The shell one, 7.7 .7 seconds to reload instead of 7.24. Shell two, 6.34 seconds uh, was the old one. 5.43 seconds is the new one. And shell three, 4.53 seconds is your reload. So shell three is your first shell, okay? And then you have a three second intricate reload. Basically, if you're firing shell one, that means you've fired all three shells. So there's a buff overall um, in terms of how long it takes to reload the shells. Shell one is the shell you reload first in the magazine. It's the third shell you shoot when reloading the magazine. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Um, overall DPM buff for the tank, right? So you can choose if you want to shoot with an empty magazine or if you want to hold your magazine and only use the third shell. Oh, I see. So first shell DPM is now 2901. So you're only going to have very low DPM overall if you're pumping the first two shells. Okay. If you're going third shell only or all the way down to your first shell and then sticking it, you're going to have better DPM. Interesting. This is going to be one that players are really going to get wrong a lot because basically the Progetto's whole shtick is how you manage the reload. That needs a video. TVP T50 slash 51. Nerf the bastard. Uh, intricate reload changed from 1.5 seconds to 1.88. I mean, is it really a big nerf? Fire one, two. Fire three, four. So you've got one, two, three gaps in there. Instead of 4.5, you're going to have. 2.88, 2.4 seconds over the three. You know, 5.4, 5.6 instead of 4.5. So, extra 1.2 seconds is basically what you're dealing with there. Reverse speed nerf, which is pretty important when you're trying to get away. You don't think it's much, but when you're actually trying to get away, that's when you know. Gun mantlet armor nerf from 120, that hurts. That really hurts. Nerf to mobility. Accuracy nerf, 0.277 best versus 0.213 now. Alpha damage nerf. DPM overall nerf, 10 off all the alpha damage. Magazine reload only takes 21.6 seconds. I think you'll still, I honestly think you'll still be able to make that thing work. I think the TVP will still work just fine. I'm going to have to play it a bit to make sure of it, but I... It doesn't change the basic fact that it's got four 300 alpha shells. You can do 1,200 damage, and you can reload it in 21.6 seconds. The mobility nerf is going to be the biggest problem, not the armor loss, not the, the shell intra-clip nerf. The horsepower um, nerf will hurt it. VZ55. Yeah. Got that on my real account. I don't have it on this account. Shell velocity. I just the two tanks I've most recently ground were the VZ55 and the Sheridan. I'm getting shafted here. Shell velocity nerf um, across the board. Look, to be honest, that's that's I'm joking. That's not really a big, not really a big deal for a heavy tank like a VZ55. It shouldn't be doing anything at range where that's a big deal. Hull turn rate on hard terrain buffed by about three degrees. Up to 41.48. Hull turn rate on medium terrain buffed by about 2 degrees. 27.65. Reload time buff from 10.9 to 10.7. That's nothing. 
0.2 of a second. So you're getting an extra 43 DPM, 40, 41 DPM. That's nothing. That's nothing. Like five millimeters more APCR penetration. Nice though, the um, mobility buffs, they're nice. 60 TP. Lewandowski. Um, as Maxi calls it, Snake Eyes, the 60 TP Big Lebowski. AP shell change to APCR doesn't help. AP shell penetration nerfed by six millimeters. Um, that sucks. Uh, heat shell penetration nerfed by 15 millimeters. Gun handling nerf. Ooh. It's only on the, uh, I think that's, is that the terrain? They're the coefficients. 0.14 to 0.12 is that that's the true on the traverse yeah that's on the traverse um which isn't great reload time nerfed so it's got lower dpm on standard, standard ammo but only by 40 damage like it's nothing it got a buff to hit points 100 hit point buff which means you can get it up to 2756 Standard ammo alpha damage buff to 630. That's huge. And you can get the HE up to 720, which is getting more in line with the standard 150 style gun. And an aim time buff. Really big for a big derpy gun like this. Actually, I might grind this. I, I like those. I like those changes a lot. Crane Vargen. The Hagen Dagen. Hello, I'm from Sweden. Um... Aim time nerf, that sucks. And any tank like this, you want an aim time nerf. Uh, you don't want an aim time nerf. Aim time nerfs on heavy tanks are pretty damaging. Uh, especially when you're in like those quick shot duels. It makes them, it really affects your overall DPM and your survivability, aim time nerfs. APCR penetration dropped 5 millimeters. Heat pen dropped 10 millimeters. Hull turn rate slightly nerfed on medium terrain. But it got a four kilometer an hour top speed buff. Okay, I can live with that. Engine horsepower, 50 horsepower buff. Again, a buff on a hard terrain of about four and a half, four point five three degrees. Um, terrain resistance buffs on hard and soft. That's nice. What have they done here? Shell one. 4.5 second reload buff down to 4.03. So it's had an overall DPM buff. It's slight, but it's noticeable. And it's it's really only going to affect you in those moments where you're spamming the button as you have a reload race. And that can be a difference. It still has the highest DPM when it's only shooting shell 3. Right? 2306. Again, another tank where juggling your and managing your reload is really important. The Caro. Engine horsepower nerf. If you just spent a whole lot of money on these tanks, like this and the Object 777, you'd be pretty nervous. Uh, 35 point horsepower nerf, not really much, and a 2 km an hour nerf. 30 millimeters of frontal armor buff, that's really nice. I think it's needed too. It was super weak in these panels either side of the gun. I think that's really good. I think that's really good. I think uh, Middleburg. Top rack on Middleburg where you're in the medium slot and you're trying to get gun depression over the edge of those hills. That's what you're going to be looking at now. Instead of weak panels either side of the gun, it's really going to make it way more effective. Strip K. Reload time nerf. Yeah, I love this tank. 0.2 of a second though. doesn't do much. DPM on AP down about 130. 140. 139 DPM. That's all. So, in the margins. Uh, penetration nerf for 7 millimeters. Gun armor nerf from 492 to 450. Turret roof getting nerfed down to 86 is probably more important. Lower plate nerf, but so what? They removed the improved engine power mobility consumable. That sucks. That was what really set this thing apart. 
They added the combat stabilization mechanic. That disappoints me. That's it. That's it. That's a lot of action, baby. Um, yeah, I'm there. I'm wrecked. Hope you enjoyed that hour and 50 minutes. I'll put heaps of stuff up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments below what videos you'd like to see uh, on these tanks first. And uh, yeah, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.